in Hollywood's first blockbuster film about Captain America. There is a remarkable detail that fans will never forget. It is the moment when Captain America sits in an aircraft shaped like a manta ray and pilots it into the ice to prevent an attack on New York City. This idea was partly inspired by a real historical event, the Nazi plan to bomb New York City. The Horton Ho 229, a radical flying wing design, was envisioned as Hitler's secret weapon, a stealth bomber capable of evading Allied defenses and striking at the heart of America. While it never achieved its full potential, the Ho 229 represents a fascinating chapter in aviation history, a blend of engineering ingenuity, desperate ambition, and the ever-present specter of what if. This is the story of the Horton Ho 229, a journey into the minds of its creators, a deep dive into its groundbreaking technology, and a critical examination of its legacy that continues to spark debate and intrigue to this day. Desperate Times, Radical Measures, The Birth of the Horton Ho 229 By 1943, the war in Europe was turning against Germany. The Allied forces were gaining ground, and the German Luftwaffe was struggling to maintain air superiority, facing mounting losses and dwindling resources. The Nazi leadership was desperate for a technological breakthrough, something that could shift the balance of power. Ring's zero requirement, an audacious challenge. Hermann Ring, the flamboyant and ambitious head of the Luftwaffe, issued a seemingly impossible challenge. He demanded a bomber capable of carrying 1,000 kilograms, 2,200 pounds of bombs, reaching a speed of 1,000 kilometers per hour, 620 mph, and flying a distance of 1,000 kilometers, 620 miles all, while retaining one-third of its fuel for combat operations. At the time, no existing aircraft could meet these demands. It required a radical rethinking of aircraft design, a departure from conventional wisdom. We, known for his extravagant promises, allocated 500,000 Rex marks to fund the development of three prototypes. This investment, though significant, reflected the desperate need for a game-changing weapon. The Horton brothers, from glider enthusiasts to jet age pioneers, Walter and Reimar Horton were unconventional figures in the German aviation scene, self-taught aeronautical engineers. They had been passionate about gliding since the 1930s. Their expertise was honed in Germany's gliding clubs, which flourished after the Treaty of Versailles restricted the development of powered aircraft. The Horton brothers were fervent believers in the flying wing concept and aircraft without a traditional fuselage or tail. They argued that this design minimized drag, maximized lift, and offered superior performance. Their dedication to this concept was unwavering, even in the face of skepticism from established aviation experts. Both brothers served in the Luftwaffe, with Walter seeing combat during the Battle of Britain. This first-hand experience reinforced his belief in the need for a high-performance fighter aircraft. Imor, meanwhile, focused on refining the aerodynamic principles of the flying wing, tackling the inherent stability challenges of the design. The Horton Ho 229, a glider prototype, takes flight. After securing Gring's approval and funding, in August 1943, the Horton brothers moved quickly to build an unpowered glider prototype, designated the Horton Ho 229. This aircraft was designed to test the basic aerodynamic principles of their radical design. On March 1, 1944, Test pilot Hai Shigauer took the Horton Ho 229 for its maiden flight at Tingen. The results were encouraging. The glider handled surprisingly well, exhibiting good stability and resistance to stall's critical achievements for such an unconventional design. A report from April 7, 1944, lauded the aircraft's potential as a gun platform, highlighting its inherent stability. Despite some minor setbacks, such as a landing accident caused by a forgotten instrument carrying pole. The Horton Ho 229 proved that the flying wing concept was viable. The Luftwaffe was sufficiently impressed to authorize the development of a powered prototype. The Ho 229 V2, embracing jet power, the next step was to equip the flying wing with jet engines. The Luftwaffe initially approved the use of BMW 003 turbojet engines, but these were in short supply. The Horton brothers were forced to switch to Junkers Jumwa for BS engines, which presented new engineering challenges.
the Horton Ho 229, and the America Bomber Project reaching for American skies. The Horton Ho 229 was not conceived in isolation. It was intimately linked to Nazi Germany's ambitious and ultimately unrealistic plans to strike at the United States. This brings us to the America Bomber Project, Hitler's transatlantic ambitions, bringing the war to America, driven by a mix of strategic calculation and personal obsession. Adolf Hitler harbored a long-standing desire to bring the war to American soil. He believed that bombing American industrial centers would cripple the U.S. war effort, weaken public morale, and force the country to negotiate a favorable peace. As early as 1938, Hermann Gring expressed his frustration with the Luftwaffe lack of long-range bombing capability, lamenting the absence of aircraft capable of stuffing the mouth of arrogance across the sea. This sentiment echoed Hitler's growing fixation with attacking the United States, even as Germany faced mounting challenges in Europe. The America Bomber Project, a technological and logistical nightmare, the America Bomber Project was launched in 1942 with the goal of developing a long-range bomber capable of reaching the continental United States. Several German aircraft manufacturers submitted designs, but none fully met the demanding requirements. The project faced numerous technical and logistical hurdles, including the lack of suitable air bases, the immense distance to the target, and the ever-present threat of Allied air defenses. Despite these challenges, the Nazi leadership remained committed to the America Bomber Project, viewing it as a potential game-changer that could alter the course of the war. The Horton Ho 229, with its innovative design and impressive range, emerged as a promising contender. The Ho 229 is the Horton Ho 18, a transatlantic bomber. The Horton brothers submitted their design to the America Bomber Competition late 1944, designating it the Horton Ho 18. This was a scaled-up version of the Ho 229, designed to carry a heavier bomb load and fly even greater distances. On March 12, 1945, the Nazi leadership awarded the Horton brothers a contract to continue developing the Ho-18. This decision, a just weeks before the end of the war, underscores the regime's unwavering commitment to transatlantic attacks, even as Allied forces advanced into Germany. The Ho-29's potential impact, a hypothetical scenario, had the Horton Ho-229 entered mass production and been deployed against the United States, what would have been the potential impact? This is a question that has been debated by historians and military analysts for decades. A successful bombing campaign against American industrial centers could have disrupted the U.S. war effort, hampered the production of vital war materials, and diverted resources away from the European and Pacific theaters. It could also have had a significant psychological impact on the American public, undermining morale and fueling anti-war sentiment. However, it is important to remember that the Horton Ho 229 faced numerous challenges, including technical difficulties, limited resources, and the overwhelming superiority of Allied air power, even if it had been deployed in significant numbers. It is unlikely that it could have fundamentally altered the outcome of the war. Unveiling the secret, the technology and design of the Horton Ho 229. The Horton Ho 229 was more than just a flying wing. It was a testament to German engineering ingenuity and a harbinger of future aviation technologies. Let's delve into the key design features that made this aircraft so revolutionary. The flying wing concept, eliminating the fuselage. The Horton brothers' unwavering commitment to the flying wing concept was the foundation of the Ho 229's design by eliminating the traditional fuselage and tail. They sought to minimize drag and maximize aerodynamic efficiency. This design allowed for a cleaner airflow over the aircraft, reducing turbulence and increasing lift. The Ho 229's wing was swept back at a sharp angle of 32 degrees, creating a smooth, unbroken line from the nose to the wingtips. This design, while visually striking, presented significant challenges in terms of stability and control. Construction materials, a blend of steel and wood, the Ho 229's construction was a fascinating blend of steel and wood, reflecting the resource constraints of wartime Germany. The central section of the aircraft, which housed the engines and crew, was constructed of welded steel tubes, providing strength and protection. The outer wings were made of plywood panels, bonded together with a unique sawdust mixture and coated with fireproof paint. 
This combination of materials was lightweight and relatively easy to manufacture, but it also presented challenges in terms of durability and resistance to the elements. Junkers Dume Waffer BS turbojet engines, power and limitations. The HO 229 was powered by two Junkers Dume Waffer BS turbojet engines, among the first operational jet engines in the world. These engines provided the aircraft with impressive speed and acceleration, but they also suffered from reliability issues and required frequent maintenance. The switch from the originally planned BMW 003 engines to the Dume Waffer BS engines forced Reimer Horton to redesign the wing, as the Dume Waffer engines were wider and required more space. This change added to the complexity of the design and contributed to delays in the development process. Control systems. Mastering the flying wing, the Ho 229's control system was a marvel of engineering. Designed to overcome the inherent instability of the flying wing design, the aircraft utilized a combination of 11's combined elevators and ailerons for pitch and roll control, spoilers and drag rudders for improved maneuverability, and wing twist to optimize airflow. The drag rudders, in particular, were an innovative solution to the problem of yaw control in a flying wing. Instead of generating directional force, they created an even drag, ding like air brakes that opened asymmetrically to turn the aircraft. Stealth before stealth, the radar evading properties of the HO 229. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Horton HO 229 is its potential for stealth. Did the Horton brothers intentionally design the aircraft to be difficult to detect by radar? Or was this simply a fortunate accident? Charcoal infused wood, a controversial claim. Weimer Horton claimed that he mixed charcoal dust with the wood glue used to bond the plywood panels with the intention of absorbing electromagnetic waves and reducing the aircraft's radar signature. This claim has been met with skepticism by some historians who point out that there is no documented evidence to support it. Northrop Grumman's radar tests, a modern confirmation. In 2008, Northrop Grumman, the company that built the Beta Spirit Stealth Armor, teamed up with National Geographic to conduct radar tests on a full-scale replica of the HO-229. The tests showed that the HO-229 had a significantly smaller radar cross-section than other aircraft of the era, suggesting that it may have possessed some stealth capabilities. However, the tests also revealed that the aircraft's shape, other than its materials, was the primary factor in reducing its radar signature. The flying wing design, with its smooth, curved surfaces, naturally scattered radar waves, making the aircraft more difficult to detect. Accidental stealth, intentional design or fortuitous outcome. The question of whether the HO-229 is intentionally designed to be stealthy remains a subject of debate, while Rymar Horton's claim of charcoal-infused wood has not been definitively proven. The radar tests conducted by Northrop Grumman suggest that the aircraft did possess some degree of stealth capability. It is possible that the Horton brothers, aware of the emerging threat of radar, incorporated design features that would minimize the aircraft's radar signature, even if they did not fully understand the underlying principles of stealth technology. Legacy in debate, the enduring enigma of the Horton Ho 229. The Horton Ho 229 never saw widespread use and its impact on the course of World War II was negligible. Yeah, it remains one of the most fascinating and controversial aircraft of the era. Was it a revolutionary leap forward in aviation technology, a harbinger of the stealth age, or simply an overhyped prototype that never lived up to its potential? A what-if factor, a technological turning point. Had the Ho 229 entered mass production and been deployed in significant numbers? Could it have altered the course of the war? Could it have successfully struck at American cities, crippling the U.S. or Africa and forcing a negotiated peace? These are questions that will continue to be debated by historians and military analysts for years to come. While the HO-229 faced numerous challenges, its innovative design and potential for stealth suggest that it could have posed a significant threat to allied forces. The influence on modern aviation, a direct lineage, did the Horton Ho 229 directly influence the design of modern stealth aircraft, such as the Beta Spirit Bomber? Some argue that there is a clear lineage, pointing to the shared flying wing design and the emphasis on radar evading properties. 
Others contend that the similarities are largely coincidental, arguing that the flying wing concept was independently explored by American engineers, such as Jack Northrop, and that the B-2 stealth capabilities are based on fundamentally different technologies. A glimpse into the future or a dead end. The Horton Ho 229 represents both a glimpse into the future of aviation and a cautionary tale about the limitations of technology in the face of overwhelming odds. Its innovative design and potential for stealth foreshadowed the development of modern stealth aircraft, while its failure to achieve its full potential serves as a reminder that even the most groundbreaking technologies can be overcome by practical challenges and the realities of war. Oh, we turn it over to you. Could the Ho-229 have changed the course of the war if it had been mass-produced? Share your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. We want to hear what you think about this extraordinary and controversial aircraft. Let's discuss the legacy of Hitler's secret weapon and its enduring impact on the world of aviation.